Uh, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Each member is acknowledging that they are attending the meeting via Zoom and that they are located in Wayne County, Michigan, unless otherwise stated when I call your name. Commissioner Varga? Here. Commissioner Palomero? I am here in Sarasota County, Florida. Yeah. It's nicer here. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say that very often. <laughs> Commissioner Kenlock? Present. Commissioner Haddis? Present. Commissioner Baydoon? Here. Commissioner Dobb? Here. Chairman Reckie? Here. You have a quorum present. Thank you. Next item. B, Chairwoman's remarks. I have none. I hope everybody received my communication about um, that there was an agenda for today. Next item. C, approval of the March 23rd, 2021 meeting minutes. Madam Chair, move approval of the meeting minutes with any okay. necessary corrections. Support. Okay, we have an approval and support. Any questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Next item. D, unfinished business. There is none listed. Okay, next item. Item one, under new business, communication from Beverly Watts, Department of Public Services, forwarding the February 2021 report of all complaint calls made to 1888 Road Crew. Okay, any questions on this? I'm sure you've all looked at your areas. <laughs> it's so nice. Madam to Chair, okay. Madam I, Chair, move to receive and file. Okay, um, could you second it, Commissioner Dodd? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yep, that's okay. We have a um, approval by Commissioner Dobb to receive and file and supported by Commissioner Kinlock. Any questions? Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Okay. Um, next item, the next three items are receive and files. If somebody um, ends up, if they wanna do these all together, but we're gonna go through each one because again, there seems to be some issues with each one. So uh, Madam Clerk, Madam could you- Chair, yeah, Yes. Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Kenlock, uh, move to receive and file. Okay, um, items two, three, and four. That is correct, Madam Chair. Okay. Support. Okay, we have an approval of support, but let's go through these. Um, and uh, Madam Clerk, could you read the first one? Item two, communication from Daryl Jones, Capital Development and Buildings Administration, forwarding notification of an emergency procurement report for a contract with a one-year option to renew with Galco Industrial Electronics. Okay, this is an emergency procurement um, for $15,173. Um, is Felicia on, on the um, line here? Or Good morning. Say? I am. Good, good morning. Um, you know, Felicia, we've gone through these before. And could you just comment on these three? I mean, all of them have different issues. I don't know if you want to take them one at a time or just a general comment on what's going on with these again, um, whatever your your desire is for this. Oh, so, so through the chair, with regards to the next several items, which are all receiving files, they were all processed as emergency procurements. Um, you'll note in our analysis that we pointed out a few issues that seem to be reoccurring. Um, one is that when there's an emergency procurement, the procurement ordinance authorizes those services prior to commission approval because it's a health or safety issue. Um, but the procurement ordinance requires that those uh, contracts are submitted to this body for receiving and filing. So the next few items are for receiving file. Um, what we found is that even though they're only submitted to the commission for receiving and filing, and even though the services have um, already either began or in some cases have been completed, the contracts for those services have not been executed by the CEO. So the question to the department was why has the CEO not executed a contract so that the county is covered by the terms 
of the agreement and protect it and the vendor understands its obligations and why are they waiting to after um, commission receiving and filing when again these have already been executed the other comment would be how are they proceeding with the services if the ceo hasn't actually authorized them um, so this is a system issue it is not an issue for the department we have noticed this with other departments for whatever reason they have a system set up whereby the ceo doesn't execute these contracts until well after the fact which kind of makes the contract pointless at this point because services have either been rendered completely or in the process. The other issue we've noticed is that the dates for the purchase order and the dates for the contract are not the same. So um, in most instances, the purchase order is a payment mechanism. So every time you have a contract, a purchase order is then issued. That purchase order is the payment mechanism that authorizes payment to the vendor. Um, the payment mechanism, which is the PO, the dates for that should always match the contract because if they're different, then you don't know, well, you're authorizing the vendor to be paid for services or time, a time period that's not included in the contract. So again, it's just another inconsistency that we've noticed in the process um, for the administration as they're processing these emergency procurements. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. And a, a lot of times these contracts go out another six, eight months, um, which is kind of concerning too. So anyway, we're gonna to have to work on this. I know we have mentioned this before and um, uh, Felicia, would this be like an ordinance? It's a system issue, like you said, would this be an ordinance change or how could we go about doing this so that every time we get one of these, it's not, like this? I think it's both. Um, to some extent, this body may want to look at um, clarifying what authority is actually giving the administration with regards to emergency procurements. For instance, when you talk about the dates and they'll do an emergency procurement and they'll do it for 24 months. Well, how is that an emergency for 24 months? So right. something should be clarified by ordinance, but some things are just a processing issue on behalf of the administration that they need to address. Okay, all right. Well, I'll be just Madame the Chair, Madame the yes. Chair, is, yes. is the administration, mm -hmm. the administration aware of those uh, uh, issues and situation? Did they have any un answer or comment on uh, the legality of those issue? Is there someone oh, from the it's administration? It's not been brought to their attention yet. Um, no, they're they're fully aware of our concerns. They, we, we always ask questions and we always engage them prior to coming here because a lot of times we resolve, I would say 80% of issues are resolved before it even comes here. So we always have those discussions. In this instance, because they were emergency procurements, they were not things that we could resolve and have them change because they've already occurred, right. but they are aware. Okay, thank you. Commissioner, Director Jones from Building Administration. I'm yes, pleased, go ahead. I'm pleased to, to uh, greet the chair. And, and, and Felicia is absolutely right. We have had discussions based on this. Some of this is internal process that we've, we've tried to work out with procurement to make sure that these contracts are necessarily viable and, and, and they're pointed to you in ahead of time before we actually get to commission. Um, these are things that we are working on and have actually I've taken notes of what Felicia has just stated and to try to correct some of those errors in the process and moving forward. So we are aware and Felicia knows that we talked to her quite a bit in order to try to correct these elements of issues. Okay, thank you. Is there anything at this point that the commission could help you with or this committee could help you with? Well, I, th um, I think that the, the relationship that we've worked out as far as reaching to the staff of commission, which is Felicia or, or Mary, it, it's very vital. And I think that we've opened that chain of uh, uh, doors in order to uh, reach uh, some reconciliations and understanding of where we need to go. So it is process of working and also working with procurement. And I think that we talked about in the near future uh, for your department and, and the procurement in order us to get together and to see if we could necessarily rectify a lot of the situations. That seems okay. to be the pattern. Ma Madam Chair. Okay. Yes. Um, just, to, just to be clear, this is an issue with multiple departments, so it's yeah. really a procurement issue. It's not like this particular department. A lot yes. of it, the process is this set up. So just so it's really something that we need to address with um, procurement for the most part, I believe. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll be in touch and whatever we can do to, to help with this would be, um, would be 
great. I'm sure we'd be more than willing to do that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have items two, three, and four that have been moved and approved. Any, any questions on number two from commissioners? Number three. And number four, and again, these are receive and file. Um, Commissioner Kinlock moved approval and Commissioner Hayes supported that. Uh, since they're receive and file, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Uh, on to number five, please. Number five, requesting commission approval of amendment to a professional services contract with Majeski and Masters. Okay, this is for the Groziel Parkway Bridge. Madam Chair, move approval. Commissioner Kenlock. I'll support Commissioner Dobb. I think we're waiting for Commissioner Palomero there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought we already approved two, three, and four. Yes, but we're on five. Okay. All righty. Yep. Okay. I'll we have an I'm, I'm good. I, I, <laughs> okay. I, I don't need to be the maker of the motion. Thank you. Okay. Sounds good. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Okay. I'm sorry. I totally apologize for that. And uh, could you make the maker of the motion, Commissioner Palomar? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. Okay, so we have Calamara and uh, Dobb. Okay, any questions on this? All right, uh, Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Commissioner Varga? Yes. Commissioner Palamara? Yes. Commissioner Kenlock? Yes. Commissioner Haddis? Yes. Commissioner Baydoon? Yes. Commissioner Dobb? Yes. Chair Marecki? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, next item, please. M6, requesting commission approval of Amendment 1 to a contract with the one-year option to renew with Baker and Associates. Okay, this replacement of Five Mile Bridge between Telegraph and Lodger Road. Any questions on this? I did not hear that. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. I have a, a question. Go ahead. Uh, this is, we're on number six, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, what is the, so the, the scope has been amended from deck replacement to superstructure replacement. Can someone define the difference between deck versus superstructure? What does that mean? Someone on from the administration from Rhodes. This is Ron Agasinski, Engineering. Good morning. Go ahead. Um, the difference is that now we're going to be replacing the uh, the abutment walls and the piers that are underneath the, the deck. Previously, we, we were planning on replacing only the deck, the top surface, and the beams. Now we have to replace the walls because we found out after analysis that they don't meet the current standards, and we have to in, improve them. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sure, any other questions? Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll on this? We didn't get a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'll move to approve. Okay. Support. Okay, Support. was that uh, Commissioner Baydu oh. supported? Yes. Sam, do you wanna move this? I'm sorry, it's in It doesn't team. matter, no, no, it doesn't matter. I support it. Actually, this is in Detroit, I believe. Oh, yes. Or Redford, maybe Redford. I have you're born on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a company. Um, okay, so we have a, an approval and support. Sorry about that. Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? Commissioner Varga? Yes. Commissioner Palomira? Yes. Commissioner Kinlock? Yes. Commissioner Haddis? Yes. Commissioner Baydoon? Yes. Commissioner Dobb? Yes. Chair Marecki? Yes. Motion passes. Next item. Item seven, requesting commission approval of amendment one to a four year sole source contract with Versa Lift Midwest. 
Okay, is this just a name change? Number seven? I believe. Yeah, this is Makisha. Okay, this is just for a name name change, right? That's correct, Commissioner. Okay. Any questions? So moved for approval. Okay. Or Commissioner Kenlock. All right. Add us and Kinlock. Any questions on this? Okay. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? Commissioner Varga. Yes. Commissioner Palomera. Yes. Commissioner Kenlock. Yes. Commissioner Haddis. Yes. Commissioner Baydoon. Yes. Commissioner Daub. Yes. Chairman Recchi. Yes. Motion passes. Next item. Item eight. Requesting commission approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the Township of Plymouth. Okay. Approval. Okay. <laughs> Support. Support. All right. I think that was a tie. Um, okay, so this is uh, park improvements and Commissioner Dobbs um, jurisdiction. So any questions on this? Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? Commissioner Varga. Whoa. Commissioner Varga? Yes, my dog was barking. Commissioner Palomero? Yes. Commissioner Kenlock? Yes. Commissioner Haddis? Yes. Commissioner Baydoon? Yes. Commissioner Daw? Yes. Chairman Recchi? Yes. Motion passes. Um, next item. Item nine. Requesting commission approval of a three-year professional engineering contract with the one-year option to renew with AECOM Great Lakes. Okay, for the Jefferson Bridge over the Huron River. Uh, move for approval. Okay. Support. Support. Margo. Margo. Okay. Margo. Margo. okay. <laughs> All right, any questions on this? Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll on this, please? Commissioner Varga? Yes. Commissioner Palomera? Yes. Commissioner Kenlock? Yes. Commissioner Haddis? Yes. Commissioner Baydoon? Yes. Commissioner Daub? Yes. Chairman Recchi? Yes. Motion passes. Next item, please. Item 10, requesting commission approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the city of Detroit. Okay, this is all for park park improvements. Over approval. Mm -hmm. Commissioner okay. Kenlock. Support. All right, we have a approval and support. Any questions on this? There's several parks with, with improvement plans. Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll on this, please? Commissioner Varga. Yes. Commissioner Palomero. Yes. yes. Commissioner Kenlock. Yes. Commissioner Haddis. Yes. Commissioner Baydoon. Yes. Commissioner Daub. Yes. Chairman Recchi. Yes. Motion passes. Next item. Item 11, requesting commission approval of a contract with Toby Construction. Okay. It's a retaining wall in the city of Dearborn. I'll move for approval. Okay. Support. All right. We have an approval from Commissioner Baydoon, supported by Commissioner Haddis. Any questions about this? Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call, call the roll, please? Commissioner Varga? Yes. Commissioner Palomero? Yes. Commissioner Kenlock? Yes. Commissioner Haddis? Yes. Commissioner Baydoon? Yes. Commissioner Daub? Yes. Chairman Recchi? Yes. Motion passes. Um, on to the addenda. Item 13 on the agenda, requesting commission approval of amendment one to a purchase and development agreement with Newburgh Mill. 
Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to go right to the, before I even have questions, I'm going to go right to the administration. Um, if there's someone on that would like to um, explain this. Yep. Um, Wafa Denaro, um, Economic Development. Okay. Thank you um, for being here. Yeah. So this is, this is, um, this is just an amendment to the original um, development, the purchase and development agreement that was um, voted on and approved last year. Um, through throughout the process, we, um, you know, originally we, the the developer was going to purchase a Newburgh Mill and purchase a different property to move the horse barn. Because of COVID, because of a fire at that property, because of the um, several different factors. The, um, the, the property owner um, wouldn't sell the property. And, it, and once the barn burned down, it, it became um, kind of, um, it, it became a moot point to, to purchase that property because they no longer had a barn on the property. So we came back to basically the drawing board. The developer still wants to purchase the mill. We are looking at, um, Wallaceville and Dearborn Heights as a as the area to build a replacement horse barn. We've talked to the sheriffs. Um, Parks is on board. Um, we think it'll be a good. It's a good area. It's accessible to the sheriffs. It's accessible to the parks. The sheriffs will be able to um, easily access the parks on horse, and they'll have plenty of space to be able to take the horses out. Um, it, it's. It's really, it actually works out a little bit better um, for, for the horses. And the amendment does a couple things. One, it changes the location of where the horses will go. And it also extends the timeline for the, for the build out just because of COVID and just because of um, everything that COVID has done to kind of the construction industry. And that, um, that change in time is from 18 months to 24 months. Correct. Is that correct? Okay. And the sheriffs are all uh, good about the location for the yeah, sheriffs and for the horses. And, and yeah, the sheriff all... support. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Uh, so the sheriffs support the location. The sheriffs have, have been involved in this process um, throughout, throughout the entire process and will continue to be involved in the process as we, um, as we move forward. Okay, I know that we had a lot of information on this um, from the attorneys. Um, I'm gonna go to the commissioners first to see who has questions and I will start there. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead, Commissioner Gobb. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to, um, I guess, uh, make a motion to pass this for the day. Um, I would like to have some questions and discussions, but we just received this addenda this morning. Um, this was a huge issue last, was this last year or the year before when we originally approved um, the contract and we all spent a lot of time reviewing the contract. Um, it's been a while since I've looked at it. Um, just to get it this morning and have a few hours to look over the modifications. I, I would really like to have a little bit more time to review everything. Um, there were a lot of commission council concerns on our packet um, that I'd like to uh, have you know, addressed here today and then um, to give me a little bit and all of, all of the commissioners a little bit more time to think about before we vote. So um, I'd like to make that motion. Um, before we go ahead. Okay. Support. And, and you, uh, I'm sorry, did I hear support? Yes, Ken Lott. Okay, okay, go ahead with your um, questions, uh, okay. Commissioner Dodd, if you wanted Thank to do that. Thank you. So um, before I just dive into the Commission Council concerns, um, one of the, the things that, um, kind of caught my eye was that, so in the new location where the barn, the sheriff's um, barn is going to be built, there are some houses nearby. And um, I did read that the residents have not been notified that there's gonna be a horse barn built close to their house. So where exactly, like how, what is the, the 
um, how close to these houses is the barn going to be built? And is there going to be any smells from the horses that could, you know, affect these people who, you know, in their houses? So, I mean, right, right now, um, I mean, there, there's a smell from horses, but right now, if you go to Newburgh Mill, where the horses currently are, you have to get, I mean, you have to get in there. You have to get into the barn to be able to smell it. So you don't, you don't smell it from the street. You don't smell it from across the street. I actually run by there, um, you know, five days a week and I can't smell it from the trail that runs right through there. Um, the, the, what, what we're talking with the developer is to build, because there's gonna be office buildings and then there's gonna be where, you know, the equestrian center. We're talking about building the office building to butt up against the neighborhood and then give it some space and build the, um, the equestrian center with some distance from, from the neighborhood. Okay, so that would be a little further back. And if I may add, um, Madam Chair, to Commissioner sure. Dobb, thank you, Wafa, as well. So our design team take, has taken into account on the preliminary concept of the residential area. Um, and again, as Wafa indicated, it will be set back from the residents. There will be particular buffers in that area. And we would definitely notify the community when um, the plans start to become a, a, under development, just to let them know, see the design and to just delay any concerns about any smells or issues relative to the new placement of the, the sheriff's operations at that location. Okay, great. And then when you say buffers, is that something like, like planting trees or, or bushes or what do you mean by Co that? Correct, because there, there are existing trees, things there, but if we need to put additional shrubbery buffers so they are not able to um, basically view directly the operations there, then we would implement those and put those in place. But as okay. WAF indicated, we've kind of laid out a design where it's not as impactful um, to the residents. It's really the administration portion that really would be um, designed close setting there. Um, and then the way we have the layout of run area for the horses and that operations, again, is set back from the residents. But we'll de we're definitely keeping that in mind as we work with the development, our economic de um, development team as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, one other question regarding the building of the barn. Um, I noticed in the in the analysis is that the county is not going to be able to pick the contractor to build the barn. That would all be up to um, the purchaser of Newburgh Mill. Was that, um, was that how we had it in the original agreement back in 20? It was, yeah, that hasn't changed. Okay, so that's what we had agreed to originally, okay. All right, and then um, just my uh, my other questions were um, everything that Commission Council had brought up in the packet. So, um, uh, Commissioner Maraki, I don't know if you want to have um, Commission Council ask questions now or wait till we go through. Um, no, that that's that's fine. If because um, there are a lot of questions. For yeah, I, I don't know. Like, you know, whatever she wants to ask. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. My dog, Lucia, but. is do you want to weigh in on this? And again, you know, this we did get this late, not not because well, whatever. But th that's why there's so many questions here. I, everybody would have probably done their uh, research beforehand, but that it was just happenstance that this came like this. Um, so, Felicia, do you have anything to say? Um, on this contract. So through the chair, um, you would note in the analysis, we pointed out um, several items related to this. Um, I think the primary item that this body should be aware of is that the administration had advised us that if the building of the um, barn costs in, in the office facility for the sheriffs costs less than the $405,000, which is the value of this contract. Um, they advised us that the contractor would then be responsible for to pay the difference to the county, um, which sounds like a great deal, right? So ultimately in the end, the county would get $405,000 worth of value. The problem with that is that the contract doesn't actually state that. There's nowhere in the contract where it states that if the building of the 
buyer is less than four hundred and five thousand dollars, that the vin the purchaser would then be required to make a payment to the county for the difference. Corporation counsel advised that the intent is there, and therefore they're comfortable. However, it's not clear to me if if the county has a certain specific financial arrangement with the vendor, why we were relying on intent versus just spelling it out within the agreement itself. So that was one of the main concerns um, in, that we discussed with the administration. They determined not to revise the agreement. So you should be aware that while they may say to you um, and advise you that the vendor, the purchaser will be required to pay that difference if indeed there is a difference required, um, the agreement does not state that. In fact, the agreement specifically says that the county will receive $405,000 in value of improvements. It says nothing about cash. This, this deal was originally set up as a land swap whereby the county was going to give over the meal and we were going to get the new property. Now this is not a land swap. Um, they are actually building the sheriff's facilities on county owned land now. Um, and so it's not even clear if the value would be 405. And we tried to have that discussion with them um, with regards to that. But in the end, they, they say that the county will receive that difference in value in cash, but the agreement simply doesn't state that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank Madam you Chair. For, yes, go ahead, Commissioner Bedum. I got a quick question. Well, if I, I'm trying to picture where this property is on Heinz. Uh, on Heinz Drive, is that close to, uh, that's not the property where the Wayne County Sheriff have, uh, um, that's not the one backing up to uh, River Oak subdivision, is it? Uh, I don't think it's River Oak subdivision. It's um, it's right off of Beach Daily and Heinz. There's um, some soccer fields over there. And oh, then there- okay, 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 so- And it's, uh, and it's elevated. Which, uh, it's yeah, the yeah, elevated yeah, portion. Area. Okay, so this is the area that uh, uh, close to the uh, to the golf course. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. The soccer the soccer fields will not be affected by this, from my understanding. Correct. Okay. So is, is it, is it uh, east of uh, east of Beach Daily or west of Beach Daily? You know. It is east of east. Beach. Daily. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is uh, probably south. Uh, I'm thinking south of Joy Road, east of Beach. Yeah, backs up to uh, the area around Beach Daily and Gully. Okay, all right. Okay, Our questions. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, Commission Council's concern. No one answered. No one addressed her concern. Yes, that's yes. Yeah, Madam Chair. Sure Commissioner Kinlock, yeah, can yeah, you hear? That's a, that's, yes, I can hold. Yeah, no, are you asking the same thing Commissioner Dobb is, sounds like? Yeah, yes, I am. Yeah, Absolutely. okay. Absolutely. Yep, so um, Wafa, do you wanna, do you wanna I can, I can, a, I can address. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So the contract, specifically spells out that the amount is $405,000. And it's, you know, if they end up building for $300,000, we are still entitled to $105,000 to complete the $405,000. It's the, the total contract is 405,000. However, they get there, it has, at the end of the day, um, the contract states that we are giving them Newburgh Mill for, $405,000. Madam Chair. And I'm not sure if he is. Um, let me I'm just say off. this. Go ahead, Commissioner Kinlock. Let me say this. Um, any financial recapturing or any of the financial terms, as far as I, um, to make me feel comfortable, must be spelled out in an agreement. Um, and I understand what the intent is and all of that, but um, I would not feel comfortable um, having a, uh, a, 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 a recapturing or an assumption um, not spelled out um, in the contract. Um, and so my, my question to council is, um, were they adamant, and no, no, not the council, but my, is someone from the Corp Council office on, um, as it relates to their appetite. 
Um, Commissioner, uh, I don't see uh, Deputy Corporation Counsel on the line who um, uh, engaged in these discussions, but you'll see from her answers to our questions that she clearly indicated, um, because I specifically inquired about an amendment, um, that that was not um, their desire to do. Um, yeah. She insisted that the intent of the agreement was sufficient. The problem is, if you read it, it literally says, and I'll read it for you, that the county will get, the uh, purchaser will complete improvements collectively value for the sum of $405,000. This is, the, it's, it's not even stated in the verbiage of cash. It's the improvements that will be valued at $405,000. There's nothing in here that states that if those improvements are less, that somehow the county will get a cash payment. No different than when this body approved the jail project. We made very clear, and it was very detailed in those agreements, every nuance as far as the financial arrangements for the if or the then or the that. Um, I've never seen an agreement where we have been suggested or requested to approve something based on the intent of the parties. Um, it's always been spelled out in the agreement. So this is a little different, but it's just not clear. I mean, maybe the vendor, the purchaser would be just nice enough to do it, but I don't see how contractual <laughs> the purchaser will be bu will bound to do so. Right. No, no. And I appreciate that. And I think we all read the comments back and they did, they did seem pretty set on the fact that commission or the corporate council that they did not want to put this in. And I think that's why we're all wondering about this and we want to pass it for the day and see exactly what's going on because we just have not had enough time to look into this. Uh, 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 yes. uh, Madam Chair, did we, did, was that, Madam Chair, was that a, the motion uh, that Commissioner Dobb made yes. or that I miss here? Um, did, did she make a motion to pass for the day? That's what I was intending on supporting. Yes, she did make she, she did. did make the motion to pass for the day, and and we're just discussing it. Yes, thank yes, you. we're yes, we're just discussing it. But but um, it sounds like commissioners are going to be more uh, leaning towards that way with all these questions. Oh, um, also, so that uh, through oh, the chair, yeah, this is Joe uh, Slazak. Sorry, yeah, to interrupt. go ahead, um, Joe. I heard from Cheryl Jordan last night that she was unable to attend this meeting because she's uh, she's got, got a court hearing scheduled for this morning that, that she's okay. in involving the county. Okay, all right. So um, any other things you wanna bring up at this point before we take the vote to pass for the day? And if, if that passes, <laughs> passing for the day, then we'll hopefully be able to work out some of these things that the commissioners are concerned about. Any other things uh, that commissioners uh, want to bring up? Madam Chair, I have my yes. hand up. From oh, I'm beginning. sorry. I'm uh, sorry. No problem. <clears throat> no problem. Uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, language in the contract, it said improvement worth 405000 <clears throat> And now we're moving to no improvement, building a new facility. Am I correct on that? Yes. Are we building a new facility? Yeah. So yes. that's why the, the language and this uh, 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 issue, it needs to be changed totally from improvement to building a new facility. And I want to know <clears throat> how far the horse barn would be from the residential. Anybody know the distance? Not direct uh, through the chair, not directly, yep. Commissioner. Um, but again, we looked at um, substantial setback from residents in the design layout. The horse barn will not be abutting or close to the residents as we have it laid out at this point. But we can get that information back. And then again, this is a conceptual design. It is not the final design for the site. Uh, please, it's another. Uh, it's another issue we need to. Yep. No, before we have the final vote on this. Um, I'm in support of a new facility, really, uh, uh, for the horses. And, and, and through, the park. Through, the, through the chair, um, improvement is, I mean, basically means building anything. It's, it's the language means that they're going to build the facilities. And we have um, an exhibit in the contract that says what they're going to build. They're going to build exactly what the sheriffs currently have, which is office space, um, and the equestrian center and, you know, a place to store the grain and the hay and all of that poor stuff. I, I, I don't know, maybe you, you know uh, more about the technicality of the language, uh, but I disagree. Improvement doesn't mean a new building. Uh, and uh, uh, another thing too, uh, I'm in support 
of uh, locating the uh, horse barn in the park and make sure the horses go in and out and the people see and have a new office uh, in the building. Uh, I, I really uh, like that. But we need to clean the language of this agreement uh, to make sure we address the issue exactly. Because when you say improvement, it's mean a new building. In my opinion, that is debatable in court in case something go wrong. You know, uh, some attorney could tell you a word of improvement, it's mean improvement, not building a new building. And it depends on the interpretation. We need to secure those kind of language to not to be debatable. We know what we vote voting on. So, uh, uh, and I like to know the distance between the barn and the uh, uh, residential, uh, that it's not too much of an issue, as you said, even in the old facility, we was there, we was outside and we didn't smell anything. Uh, so, uh, but the only thing I'm really looking for to have a clean cut agreement between us and the people who's gonna build the new facility and not leave any loose end in the language with it. Okay. Any other commissioners want to weigh in on this at this point? Okay, I think uh, commissioners have voiced their concerns. And, um, and again, for anybody on the line that doesn't know what pass for the day means, uh, if this does pass, it means it comes on our agenda in two weeks again. It'll automatically be placed on the agenda. Okay, anything before we vote on this? And from administration, from anybody, from commissioners. Okay, Madam Clerk, can you call the roll on this to pass for the day? Commissioner Varga. Yeah. Yes. Commissioner Palomera. Yes. Commissioner Kenlock. Yes. Commissioner Hattis. Yes. Commissioner Radun. Yes. Commissioner Dobb? Yes. Commissioner Recky? Yes. Motion passes. Next item, please. Item 14, requesting commission approval of purchase and development agreement with Gibraltar School District. Okay, is there somebody from the administration that can um, uh, speak on this issue? Wafa, through the chair. <laughs> um, <laughs> So unfortunately, um, Anthony was supposed to be here, um, but his grandfather died this morning, so he can't um, he can't be oh. here. I I'll try and answer as much of this as I can. I I was you know kind of going through the contract as 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 this meeting was going on, so I can try and answer um, anything you guys. And if I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for volunteering to try. <laughs> Um, can you just give us like a, a roundabout synopsis of this? Yeah, so Gibraltar, Gibraltar School District has property. Oh, actually, Anthony's back, so I will let him take it. Oh, Anthony, go ahead. And we're sorry about your grandfather. Anthony? He's, he's on, yeah. So basically, I, I can give the gist of this. I do know that much. Um, the, the, the Gibraltar School District owns property on both sides of this uh, 0.2 acres, and they are looking to sell it to a developer, but they want to be able to have the full, um, they want it to be conti contiguous. So they reached out to us um, to sell them this small parcel of land um, and that's what's, uh, that's what's before you. Okay, and it's a piece of land that we're not doing anything with, I assume. Yeah, it's, it's a vacated piece of land. Um, like I said, it's, uh, it's 0.2 acres. It's not a very small piece of land and it, it, it's gonna be used to connect their, their two pieces of land so they could sell it to a developer. Okay. All right. And the chair move for approval. All right. Support. Support. Okay. We have Commissioner Hattis, Commissioner Varga. All right, thank you for being here for the explanation. That's, Pal that's Palomera, it's his district. Oh, was that Palomera? 
I'm sorry. I did oh, pay support. Oh, Palomar yeah. is. I'll let him do it. No. I'll you guys hear me now? Be the <laughs> yeah, motion can... maker. Okay. You're too late, Anthony. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, that's that okay. Call. We're sorry about your grandfather. Thank you. I just got a call about 30 minutes ago while I was on this call in this meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, no. I think I think Wafa did a good job. So thank you for coming back on. But uh, yeah, sorry. Jeez, it's awful. Um, I think I think commissioners. Does anybody have any questions for Anthony or Wafa on this? Okay. All right, Madam Clerk, can you uh, call the roll on this, please? Commissioner Varga? Yes. Commissioner Palomero? Yes. Commissioner Kinlock? Yes. Commissioner Haddis? Yes. Commissioner Baydoun? Yes. Commissioner Daub? Yes. Chairman Reiki? Yes. Motion passes. All right, next item, we'll go back to the original. Um, Agenda. Item 12, a discussion on <laughs> trimming and grass cutting. Okay, um, DPS group asked that they could have a discussion on tree trimming, grass cutting to kind of spell out exactly what's going on with that and where their jurisdiction is and who's here that wants to speak on this. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Commissioners, this is Director morning. Watts. Hi, Good Director morning. Watts. Good morning. Uh, I also have um, Bill Bantam, formerly the Rose Director, who's yeah. still on assisting us. And then I have yeah, Robert yeah. Rivers, who's one of the uh, Division Directors of Rose. Steve <laughs> Chan is out of the office uh, this week. So uh, they're going to be coming and just giving a brief presentation, really, as we're starting the springtime and we're beginning the season again, uh, uh, along with a lot of questions we get about our infrastructure, but particularly this one, we think is really good. We want to communicate our processes since we've had a lot of questions in the last couple of months and over the years and last summer as it relates to our mowing practices, sweeping practices, uh, what's allowable, uh, what agreement we have with MDOT, and, and as far as tree removal as well. So uh, the Roads team has put together a brief presentation uh, that's really to, to communicate and educate and respond to any questions any of the commissioners may have to give clarity on areas of our practice and our procedures and, and what we still do and what we still don't do. Uh, I just want to mention also as it relates to our mowing of our boulevards, over the years we traditionally have had you know, several complaints even though we worked hard with one vendor. Um, we realized that wasn't working well for us with our mowing of our boulevard. So this year we've attempted to get multiple, you know, small vendors uh, to assist us, you know, divide up in certain acreage or areas they'll have. And then that way they can, they can mow the boulevards and we'll get a better, uh, the citizens will see a better performance. This gives us two things. It helps us too for some of the small mom and pop uh, mowing companies that traditionally wouldn't have the resources to have such a large contract with the county. Um, so our goal really was to have four and divide up the boulevards and we'll have four, you know, vendors. Unfortunately, you know, through the procurement process, I think we only ended up with two. Uh, and that's because, you know, people bidding or lack thereof. Um, a lot of the companies such as this is, is struggling right now uh, of finding staff um, to hire you know, as unfortunately individuals receiving, you know, needed stimulus checks or unemployment is really struggling right now to retain talent. So a couple of those companies could not put a bid in because they didn't have the staffing, but we're still hopeful. And we have two companies, I believe that we're looking toward that will come before this, this committee for approval. Two companies will work better than one um, because we'll divide those areas up between the two companies, and then we, we still should see a great greater in performance. So at this point, I think, um, Chairwoman, I think we forwarded over Bill Banton for it over the presentation, because somebody has to upload it. I think they have a short PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Did you receive okay. it? Did anyone I, receive it? You or Makisha or whoever can, can load up the presentation. Bill, who did you I, send it over to? I sent it to uh, Commissioner and Makisha. And uh, if not, if you allow me to screen share, I can pull it up if that uh, makes it okay. easy. Madam Clerk. You can share a screen whenever you're ready. Okay, okay perfect, perfect. Okay, so with that, that's just the purpose of what we hear. And this just to really to answer any questions. And this is gonna be really good 
um, to really show you uh, what we do, what services we do. And at this point, I'll just turn it over to Bill. Um, so am he I, can go uh, through the PowerPoint. So are you able to see my screen? Yes. So yes, hey, hi, Bill. Hi, how are you? Good, good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. So uh, uh, one of the things that was brought to my attention, there was there was some questions and that were asked at uh, one of the cost meetings and we just wanted to come back and make sure everybody got clarity on, on what our policies and procedures were. And if I'm not mistaken, one of the questions was, um, does the county plant trees under overhead wires? So just wanted to uh, uh, insert, the county doesn't currently have a tree planting program. In other words, we don't have any funds allocated that we use to buy trees or place trees on the county right away. I want to say about eight years ago, um, there were some grants that came by. Those grants provided trees for us, uh, working with the communities, identifying where they wanted those trees planting, planted. The county did plant those trees. So we don't have a tree planting uh, program, but we do have a tree planting policy uh, and a tree planting selection guide. So in other words, if, if someone wants to plant a tree on Wayne County right away, they would apply for a tree planting permit. Um, when that happens, we would give them a tree selection guide and a tree selection policy, which basically guides them in the process of, you know, where that tree can be safely planted. And in there, it, it, it expressly says uh, uh, it prohibits trees from being planted under overhead wires, street lights, or any other overhead object. Uh, uh, obstruction. It identifies how far trees have to be planted away from the sidewalk. And it also goes into additional details, identifying what kind of trees can be planted, along with a list of what kind of trees cannot be planted. And then before that tree permit is granted, uh, somebody from our forestry department will go out and meet with that resident, um, identify the tree, identify the location. And if everything meets our criteria, then that tree planting permit will be um, will be issued to that uh, to that resident to plant that tree at their cost. Uh, does the county sweep and clean state freeways and entrance ramps? Uh, Wayne County no longer performs mobile sweeping on the state system at all. I want to say about five years ago, MDOT contracted that out to private contractors, so we no longer sweep on the freeways and we no longer sweep on any of the state roads. And the, uh, the entrance ramps and the exit ramps are considered part of the freeway. So that's also maintained by the MDOT uh, sweeping contractor. However, we do junk. We do uh, provide what we call junking or litter pickup on, on the state road. So in other words, if you see mattresses or if you see um, chairs or tires or anything on the road, we still do what's called junking slash litter pickup. But even with that service that we provide, we still have to contact MDOT. Uh, MDOT will generally send somebody out to look at the location, see what's warranted, and then they'll authorize us to go out and do that. So even that service we still provide, we can't do it on our own. We still have to get permission from MDOT. So if a resident calls and says, hey, look, 94 is in real bad shape. When are you guys gonna go out and junk it? We'll contact MDOT, MDOT will send somebody out and they'll say yay or nay as far as when we can get out and get that debris picked up. So when it comes down to mowing, uh, one of the things that Director Watt indicated and that she stressed this year um, to, you know, just to make sure that we provided a better mowing service was, in the past we had one mowing contractor to do all of our boulevards and our partials, one mowing contractor to do our grade separations. This year, we put it out for multiple contractors. I believe we had five that came in at first, but once they realized they weren't getting the whole bulk of the county mowing, three backed out and we were left at two contractors to do our, to do our boulevard mowing now. So the, the benefit of that is uh, now we can have a contractor on the west side doing the west side of drives uh, and, and those roads, but we can also have a contractor now just focusing on the east side. The other thing is it gives us the ability now to go from 10 cycles to 12 cycles in mowing per year. And you know, um, doing it every four weeks wasn't enough. Now, now we're basically, we'll be mowing every, every two weeks. So now we're going from 10 cycles to 12 cycles. The other thing is historically, what, what I think it was last year, the year before that we just started doing a herbicide treatment. And if you ride down out of drive, for example, you will notice the weeds grow faster than the grass. 
So the grass might be six inches tall, but the weeds are 10 inches tall and that just makes it look so much worse. So now we're actually doing herbicide treatments, which slows down the weed growth and kind of um, allows it to kind of grow with the grass so it doesn't look so bad between cycles. So this year, not only are we doing 10, uh, 12 mowing cycles, but we're also doing two herbicide sprays on all of the areas that are maintained by the contractors. Grade separations, historically, we've done four cycles. This year, that's going to six cycles. So the grade separations along with all of the boulevards should look uh, a lot better this season. Uh, any questions or comments before I move on? Madam Chair? Yes, go ahead. Hi, Andrew Kandrievis from uh, Wayne County Executive Board Evans Office. Bill, can you just explain what a grade separation is just so everyone's on the same page with that? Yeah, those, those are where you get the, the overpasses where you have the, uh, uh, the railroad tracks and you have the concrete wall and the grass going up toward the railroad track. So those are the grade separations. And, and that requires a specialized um, fleet, if you will, right? Yeah, you know, that's something that we haven't done for years because it, it requires specialized equipment. Um, there's not a lot of vendors out there that have that specialized equipment. And uh, so we've been fortunate to find a vendor the last few years um, to, to maintain that for us. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just thought that might be helpful. No, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, the other thing is the grade separations are much smaller areas. So when we talk about four cycles to six cycles, they're much smaller areas. Uh, uh, and they're, you know, they're not as sightly. And it, it appears that the grass grows slower on those slopes. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Are you, are you continuing? You have more? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, so, go ahead. So, so when we talk about uh, what is the county's tree removal policy, this, you know, we get these questions a lot. People calling in saying, can you remove this tree for various reasons? Um, trees are removed by Wayne County for any of the following reasons. When a tree is considered 50% dead, and we get this question a, a lot, how can you tell if the tree is 50% dead? Well, you can, you can basically look at it and, you know, the portion of the tree is dead. There'll be no leaves. The bark will be a different color. So we basically look at that and determine what's 50% dead. If the, if the tree is diseased uh, to the point where, you know, there's no remedy or treatment for that tree and the disease is going to cause the tree to die at some point, we'll remove that tree. Um, if the tree is a hazard because it's been hit by a car, struck by lightning, wind damage, or anything along that line, or if the tree is a site obstruction, you know, preventing traffic or, or someone from seeing at particular interchanges. That's mostly when we're talking about shrubs that grow out and supposed to being up, causing some site issues. So what is the county's tree removal policy continue? So trees will not be removed by Wayne County for any of the following reasons. Uh, and this is a big one, we get this all the time. You know, the tree has damaged my sidewalk. Sidewalk or sewer damage caused by trees, the county will not remove those trees. We won't remove them for aesthetic reason. Uh, and we get this one, we get this one a lot. People actually call us and say that, you know, the tree is blocking the sun and I'm not getting enough sun. Uh, we won't go out and remove it for that. We won't go out and remove a tree because it's shedding uh, leaves, twigs, or small limbs. Those are the things that we will not remove trees for. The other thing is, is so these policies are, have been in place for years. And when we get these kind of calls about these, one of the things that we do, not just telling the, uh, the citizen that we're not going to remove the tree, but we also send them a, co a, a copy of our tree removal policy so they can understand what we do, what we don't do. And one of the things that's included in that tree removal policy, if you have a tree whose roots are damaging a sidewalk, we will allow that citizen to go in and trim those roots away from the tree, you know, before they replace the sidewalk. But again, that's the citizen's responsibility. And you know, sidewalks are generally handled by the adjacent property owner or the community. Sidewalks is not something that the county does. And I believe that those were the questions that were asked um, that Director Watts asked me to cover. Um, if you guys have any additional questions about uh, those particular services, we'll be happy to answer it. Bill, could you send that slideshow to the clerk so that we could all get that? I think it'd be helpful for even our newsletters, some of those facts. Because okay. we do get, right now we do get a lot of, uh, you know, especially about the trees, like you said. So if, if that would be all right. Oh, um, absolutely. Think, now, would it would it help if I actually sent a copy of the different policies that were referenced also? 
Sure, that'd be great. Okay, okay great. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for this. Um, commissioners, do you have questions? Yes, I, uh, yes. I, I do have a question and I know uh, Mrs. Watt been put up with me a lot on those issues in the past. And uh, uh, I uh, received uh, communication from Sumter Township uh, uh, last uh, few weeks. Uh, resident uh, uh, been complaining about the cartel and the weed growing around the intersection and blocking the traffic uh, signs. So, and he uh, went out and cut those on his own and complained to the township. And the township, he sent me the complaint and he uh, communicated with the township. And I uh, uh, talked to uh, uh, some of the elected official and the township center uh, and uh, their complaint, it's about the traffic sign been covered by those weed and the resident. And the township wanted to know because it's the same thing every year almost in certain area. So I want to know uh, if we know we have two contractors to help in the boulevard, but do the forestry division still responsible for those rural area and the townships? Uh, we gonna uh, add to the cutting process or still the same of last year. Uh, uh, the improvement is gonna be for east side, west side at large or certain boulevard only. So it's gonna be east side, west side at large. Uh, so the contract was broken, broken basically into two pieces. Uh, one contract will be handling the west side of the county. The other contract will be handling the east side of the county. Now, what you're speaking about specifically is something different. That's called swath mowing. We weren't able to contract out swath mowing because it's another um, it's another task that costs for specialized equipment, and we haven't found a vendor that has that particular equipment yet. What we did on the county's end was. We went out and bought two what we call extended tractor boom trackers so we can be more efficient. So I believe that takes us up to six boom trackers. The other thing that, that, that will happen this year is now because we've actually added to what the contractor is doing, we've added to partials, we've added that, that area around Dix and, and uh, I-75 that's a uh, pet peeve for Commissioner Varga. Those areas that we were also mowing outside of the contractor's responsibility We've now given that over to the contractor. So basically for us now, we'll be focusing on our swath mowing and we'll be focusing on our yard mowing and just a couple of the smaller partials. So we expect to be you know, 50, 60% more efficient doing those swath mowing areas now uh, because we bought two more, two more pieces of equipment, nor will we have to dedicate employees to those other things. They can just focus entirely on that swath mowing. Well, <clears throat> I know as long as we have contractors to help us resolve those issues. Uh, in the past, I mentioned something was not well received uh, for whatever reason, as must be good reason, or I agree or disagree, it's not the issue. Uh, the issue, and, and uh, I speak for my district, because I, the different districts have different issues. Uh, city usually don't have as much as issues township. Township, there's some set mind mentality. They think the county has to do everything. You know, if, if the weather don't go good, then they blame the county and the commissioner, which it's come with the responsibility and I agree with it. But I'm trying to find a solution that would be good and fair for everybody and I, I throw the question on, on all the three townships I have, if in the future we find a new way to contract with you to take care of those problems you've been complaining on, the same complaint every year, every year. And Mrs. Watt could tell you, every year I sound like a broken record to her. So maybe in the future we should think 
long as we contracting, sometimes the, the best contract is the one resolve the problem and take the blame and the responsibility out of our hand long as they do the right thing. And maybe we should think in the future to contract with those townships and those area they complain about. It's, it's a... Commissioner Varga. Commissioner Varga, you're not on mute. So okay. it's, a, okay. it's an idea we need to throw it on the table to see if we could come up with a good solution. I'm not saying, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the new way you do and it's not going to resolve the problem, uh, but uh, it's something to have on the table to think about it as if, if things get worse, we need to think about this seriously. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, thank you for that, Commissioner. You're absolutely right. And uh, I never get tired of hearing, uh, you know, how we can improve our operations or complaints that comes part of the territory and with my job. So just to say that to you, I welcome when you give me the feedback. Uh, we will always be open to look at any options that we can. Um, first of all, you know, we're always going to start in-house. And then we will start with uh, support staff of contractors that really perform those type of services to uh, supplement uh, the skill set that we have. Uh, as it relates to reaching out to municipalities, having those type of agreements, we've looked at several of those on other entities, primarily with snow, uh, snow and ice season. Uh, there's a lot of those things that have to be worked out before you can get to that where a county is going and we're going to pay and compensate a municipality for doing that service. Uh, it's not as easy as it sounds mechanically and financially, uh, even with MDOT and all those structures. However, to let you know, we have looked at all of those things. Uh, hopefully this year, what we're trying to do, uh, we will improve upon the services to those areas you referenced until we get to a mechanism, either we increase our in-house ability to do it or contractors obtain that company as they are refining and you got new businesses opening where they'll have that specialized equipment to perform that specialized work in those areas. We won't wait on that, we'll continue to do that. That's why this year, just like Bill stated, by moving some of the other low hanging fruit over to our contractors that we're gonna get, freeing up our in-house staff and our forestry division, as well as recruiting some of them that allow them to really more focus and centralize on those areas. So as we're looking at it, we'll see how it goes this year. We'll see as much as we can get to. I mean, they've been working on this ever since the um, summer ended last year, just working on a plan, how we can do it better with multiple contractors, freeing them up. That way they can have the resources they can for those areas that you're saying. We're not gonna be able to cure it overnight, but we will, we feel confident that we are. You know, we're gonna slow that pace of the complaints coming down, especially in those areas um, that you have overgrowth and it's a sight blind for safety. And you know, we don't want people to have to go into the road to look around and see what's coming. That is extremely bad and that's safety and that's not good. So I really have charged them with focusing on that, particularly, you know, this year. What we will do and what they will begin to do roads uh, with Steve, Shea, Robin, and Bill and the DMs in certain areas, yeah, particularly in like Sumter and some of the areas, right some of the areas <laughs> that you reference, about. you know, that's not really a hazard in cities, but certain district in your areas and other commissions, we will engage more of the DPW directors down there and have more collaboration of some of those hot spot areas. And that's what they're gonna begin to do any week now, they're gonna start having those meetings and that engagement so they can really collaborate with those townships like you know, Sumter, you know, City of Wayne, you get to Brownstown, you have some of those areas down there where those rural areas, Van Buren. So that way they can have the collaboration. The DPW director can say here, this is what we have. Our crew already know what they have and develop that plan and start tackling them and get them down, especially those priority areas where it is a safety uh, and a hazard for our drivers to see into ongoing traffic. So thank you for that. And we are working on it. And we will look into every option. Thank you. Okay. Um, you know what? I have a question now that you're all on here at one time. Mm -hmm. um, we had a woman last year that um, kept calling the office about uh, the possibility of spraying weed killer on the bridges 
at six and seven mile over 275. There's no grass on there, but the weeds grow in there. Do we, do, does the county ever um, spray herbicide when there's huge, you know, weeds growing? Even in the cracks sometimes in the media on the county roads, um, so that it's not even grass. So do we do anything like that? They were getting we, pretty high, I remember. So we, we can take a look at that area. We, we have purchased in the last few years some chemicals and we do still have employees who have the certification. So we don't do it on a uh, widespread basis, you know, but we can take a look at that area and, and see if that's the right uh, uh, fix for that area. Okay, and you know, I live right near Six Mile and that bridge, so I can keep an eye out as well to see how it's going and they'll let you know if something starts going on this year. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody? Madam any Chair? Yes. Yes, uh, was it. Could we bring them back? I have a very, very heavy schedule in Ways and yes. Means yeah. uh, following this and we're running already 12 minutes late. Yes, and I'm very sorry because I did not know that agenda was coming. Or, or we apologize as well. No, 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 it's not. It's not. Your, no, your no, don't apologize. No. I just uh, need you to come back next time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We'll be back. Yeah, Thank yeah, we're you. gonna be we're gonna be back soon about a couple other things, so maybe we can combine okay. this. But yeah, thank you for the presentation today. Any Absolutely. other quick questions, Commissioner Marecki? Yes, yes, this is Commissioner McCormick. I just wanted to ask one quick question. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Do you mind? Uh, thank you. Um, street sweeping. Is there a schedule for that? There is. There is a schedule for street. Uh, street sweeping i believe it's it's posted on the county's website uh we do three cycles per year okay, okay. um yeah and if it's not madam chair yeah. if it's not posted because what we normally do and we're about to do this in a couple of weeks as you know we're going to be putting out all our press release announcements for our 2021 construction season for engineering division our road maintenance paving season for roads and that's where we include also uh our sweeping schedule traditionally so bill i don't know if that's been released yet because we're going to do it probably in two weeks and then also it will include any capital improvements that's happening over in our parks division and you know what, okay, Beverly, right. it hasn't been released. I'm thinking last year's schedule. But You're thinking not, last year. That's why I said, yeah, we haven't. So Commissioner McCormick, it has not been released yet. That's coming in a couple of weeks, but we'll make sure this honorable body gets it even before it's kind of, you know, the same day it's launched. And it will be posted throughout the summer, but we'll make sure each one uh, through Andy, he'll make sure each one gets it as well. So you'll have it as your schedule as we predict what week we're going to be doing this week. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Great, and thank you for coming here. Oh, the dog's barking. <laughs> so, okay, he said it's time you. for lunch. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Okay, okay. Um, thanks bye -bye. a lot, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, next item, next item uh, Madam Clerk. Such other matters as may be properly submitted before the committee. Okay, there are none that I'm aware of. Next item. Public comments. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Okay, anyone from the public that would like to address, I am so sorry. <laughs> There's no one here to take the dog out. Anyone that would like to address the Committee on Public Services, you have one minute to do this from the public. Um, is there anyone, Madam Clerk, can you unmute everyone? Yes. The lines have been unmuted. Okay, anyone from the public that would like to address this committee? Anyone from the public? Okay, did we get any emails, Madam Clerk? No, we haven't received any emails. Okay, all right, one more time. Anyone from the public? Okay, I, I have not heard anyone. Thank you. Um, next item. Adjournment. Adjournment. Madam Chair. Yes. Be, be, before we adjourn, I do have a very brief matter, and, I, and I'm sorry that it's get cutting into ways and means, but okay. there, was, there was supposed to be a contract up to repair Gro uh, Goddard Road today that has been in the work for months, but it, uh, after, re after the commission receiving it in late March, it was returned to the administration because in one of the paragraphs, the vendor's name was not listed. 
where it was listed in like several other paragraphs. So it was clearly a very minuscule typographical, if you will. But now what it does, it delays this project by one whole month. And I'm not looking to blame anybody for doing their job on discovering this. But what I want to find out is what can be tweaked where common sense measures can be taken, where a name that is forgotten in one paragraph but is included everywhere else can just be inserted. So these delayed measures, because it makes the county look bad to have to go back to the vendor and say, nope, there was a typographical oversight that delays this road repair project a month. Is it in procurement? Is it in our rules? I mean, it's very frustrating to, to not be able to address matters that should be simply and commonsensically addressed. Okay, um, thank you, um, Commissioner. And how about if I touch base afterwards with the clerk and um, our council and see what we can. Yeah, Commissioner, oh. um, through, yes. the chair, through the chair. So in this instance, the name was not included in the opening paragraph as a party. They actually didn't include the party. So it was something that had to be addressed because the agreement currently states it's between the Wayne County and no one else is blank. Um, so it was actually a significant change that I believe we pointed out last Thursday. Not sure why it hasn't been changed since then, um, but it is a simple fix that the department can easily do. And hopefully in this instance, if um, Chairwoman Bell can be, uh, if she's willing, this item could easily go for immediate consideration if that request is made um, so that it actually doesn't delay the contract. And, uh, okay. Through, through the chair, Hello, this Oh, sorry, this is Hi, this is, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Michelle Yancey. I was just gonna say the contract was just returned to the department today to make that necessary correction. And it's being forwarded back to commission as we speak. Okay. Okay, and I think uh, Commissioner Palomero's um, concern too is sometimes um, maybe these look, things look insignificant and maybe it doesn't happen all the time, um, but thank you. Everyone, are you are you okay with that, Commissioner Palomero? And I, I, that that would be fine. I would have preferred that you know it, it would have been taken up today, but but it can yeah. be taken up, I you know a week from today at full board for immediate consideration. That that's fine. Rather than or else it's not going it's going to wait until May sixth. And to me right. that yeah, right. So maybe you can touch touch base. I, I will touch base with Bell. Chair, yep, but Chair yeah, Bell. Thank you. It's, fi it's fine with me. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, so we are on adjournment at this point. Over adjournment. Okay. <laughs> we have support. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. We are now adjourned and going into the next one very quickly. <laughs> Bye.